Okay, I skipped season 5. Well, I, I watched it, but I'm not going to review it. He's a TL TLDR. Cicada was terrible, both Cicadas. Nora was a pretty good character. Barry and Iris made good decisions together regarding Nora, except for that episode. Earbud's plan was genius, and Barry's suit was god-awful. Okay, Season 6 review. Season 6 was not that bad, actually. Don't get me wrong, the current status of the show is a former shadow of what it once was. But, with the looming presence of a certain event, it's going to make this season a bit more... better, I guess. Both parts. This season does something unique, and I actually enjoyed it, despite having... despite the the latter half being god awful. We have two big bads, one for each story, and I did like that. You know, having story arcs or, or graphic novels instead of having one, you know, big villain of the season. That's fine if they don't want to shorten the season like, uh, you know, Daredevil or, or any other Marvel shows. But having this type of arc is great because shorter arcs, more tension, and more room for character growth. We'll start off with pre crisis arc Blood and Truth. The Flash must. Die. This is an excellent arc. With the backbone of Crisis nearing, Barry must accept that he's going to die. And he decides to train Team Flash for the upcoming Crisis slash post-Crisis. And this is great! My god! We get to see so much and I'm, I'm going to cry. Character growth and good ones at that. We'll talk about Barry and Ramsey in a bit, but every character has a mini character arc on how they feel about the upcoming Crisis. Cisco without powers must step up into becoming a leader without his powers. We get to see Frost and Ralph grow as characters, especially Frost, who's becoming her own person. Literally. We get to see Barry and Joe interact, and Joe deserves everything. We do not want him to lose his son, and my god, I Iris does some reporting. Now we get to Barry and Bloodwork, and my god, this was amazing. Barry and Bloodwork work so well together in the case of ideologies. Barry was preparing to die during crisis, somewhat, and Ramsey wasn't accepting that he's going to die due to his disease and will do anything to survive. You're a dead man too, aren't you, Barry? So why don't you fight for yourself? I'm marking my calendar with the days I have left to live. And I'm gonna spend them saving as many people as I can. Even becoming a red abomination from the Incredible Hulk, both characters struggle with this during the best episode of season six, the Last Temptation of Barry, Alan, Part 1, specifically. This episode is amazing. Ramsey challenged Barry psychologically slash emotionally, instead of super speed or intellect, something Barry isn't good at doing. Ramsey went full on Adrian Chase here and broke Barry mentally. And while this feels like a simple battle for the soul story, we really don't know how it's going to turn out. Will Barry submit to Ramsey and fight Crisis with his newfound abilities? Or will he resist Ramsey and fight him, then quote unquote die in crisis that's what make that that's what makes the episode so good and it's even better with my main man grant gustin this man pulls off a panicked scared angry and guilty barry allen all at once and seeing grant Gus gustin cry makes us all cry he wants to possess your form no matter the cost God. all those headstones those people are dead because of my connection to you how many times do i have to suffer for you when is it your turn to suffer? Ramsey was also amazing as well. The way he convinced Barry and messes with his mind is so unique and it's amazing to watch because I think if we were all in Barry's position, I think we would have taken his offer because, you know, we don't want to die and we get to control blood. And there's nothing much more to say about this you know, episode. This was amazing to watch and I love the episode and the final episode of this arc as well. The CGI isn't bad. It's really good, actually. Like, for a whole... A blood monster, it's pretty good. Wow, I hope nothing goes wrong with the CGI. Overall, this arc was amazing, and I cannot really fault this season, you know, as with the stakes being higher than ever, and Barry must unite Team Flash more than ever. Now we'll get to Mirror Master, Mirror Monarch, Grodd, Pied Piper, Godspeed. Who is the villain? She made incredible pancakes. Cecile, trust me, Iris can't make pancakes. I cannot believe... I cannot believe that this is an arc. This is straight up filler arc and wraps up the series apparently. I will count the final three episodes from season seven as since they do finish the arc. Mirror Monarch is terrible, not because she's a vill terrible villain per se, it's because she's not in conflict with the Flash. She's Iris's villain, hello? I still don't know what her endgame was and I, I was just confused. Black hole, <laughs> Black hole was boring. 
Iris being captured, while was intriguing, it led to nowhere because quite literally, Iris moved to nowhere for majority of the arc. I don't know even what to write in this arc because there's nothing. Eva isn't a threat to Barry. He doesn't challenge him in major ways villains do. Every major villain has cha challenged Barry in ways villains of the week don't. And either is the villain of the six month story arc. If the first half of season six focused on pre-crisis and how they need to survive it, why couldn't post-crisis be stories on living in post-crisis? I mean, there's literally episodes based on it. Barry finding his parents' graves. He couldn't find it because it moved in post-crisis. And fighting Pied Piper. Wally coming back and telling Barry the speed force is dying because a certain energy killed it. Grodd becoming a speedster. They're trying to build an artificial, artificial speed force. And holy crap, an exorcism of reverse flash. Jesus Christ. There's so many plot points about post-crisis that it should have just been about that. Yeah, there's no big bad of the arc, but I don't think we need that. Maybe rebuilding the artificial speed force could have been the main plot. Every villain post-crisis was more interesting than Eva. Pied Piper was more interesting, Godspeed was more interesting, the, the Gorillas, Reverse Flash, and even the Vo Barry. He lasted one episode. Now, we get on to, to the worst things, two of the worst things I've witnessed in a while. Run. Barry. Run. This is the mini plot thread that made me really annoyed. Like, really annoyed. Now, the artificial speed force needs multiverse of particles. And yes, that sounds really stupid, but let's go along with it. And the only person who has that is Harrison Nash Wells. Since every other Wells has resided in him, since Crisis destroyed the multiverse and all the Wellses. So, Nash has to sacrifice himself to power up the ASF, the artificial speed force. And that's perfect, I'll give him that. Harrison Wells creating the Flash once more. That's perfect. Seriously. If you don't remember, in the original timeline, or the timeline that Eobard was from, Harrison Wells created the Flash by, you know, using the particle accelerator explosion. In the year 2020, you and your wife, Tess Morgan, successfully launched a particle accelerator that changed the course of history. I need it to happen a bit sooner if I'm going to get back. And they did that again here. So they should have left off like that. Every Wells that we all know and love, giving their last goodbyes to Barry and saying, Wow, Barry, you idiot, what kind of situation did you get into this time? With a heartwarming goodbye and Tom Kavanagh sending off as the best actor, the, the, um, you know, the best part of the season. That's the best part. But no, they realise the ASF makes Barry emotionless, even though it was created through emotion. Literally, a, a lot of love from every Wells and Barry was crying. And they destroyed it to make another one with Iris. Why? They should have done the artificial speed force where Barry was the Vo Barry first. So they create the speed force first, realize that, hey, Barry is becoming a bit of a, um, you know, the Vo jerk. Then they destroy it. Then they make a new speed force with Harrison uh, Nash's sacrifice. And boom, that's it. A, a speed force created by Wells, created with love. And then, yeah, maybe some nonsense science happens where, you know, the, art of the, the new speed force was kind of messing up. Boom, Iris comes out. Then the whole love thing happens. Yeah, I know Iris making the new speed force is ridiculous. But it doesn't make way it doesn't make waste to Nash's and every world's a sacrifice. Like, come on, man. This is how they send off with the best actor and the best characters in the Arrowverse, in the Flash, by killing him and then making his sacrifice useless. And that whole lightning rod thing was, was dumb. I know you'd find your way back to me. <sighs> this is his speed we're talking about. This is not their love. This is this is his powers. Why why are they making Iris the, the catalyst for it? And the way they defeat Eva was really, really bad. They talked her out of being a bad guy. And holding her hand and everyone escapes. What is that? Eobard got erased, Zoom got mutilated, Iris shot Savitar, Team Flash killed the Vo, and Team Flash erased Future Cicada, and Team Flash trapped a uh, blood work in that cri that thing. And this and they decide to use the power of friendship to defeat the season's big bad? That's so boring. What is that? I, I hope it doesn't happen in season seven, but far out. If there's one thing I liked in the whole rebirth of the Speed Force is the new wells, the original the original worlds, which I really liked. The one who got killed by Eobard. 
And admittedly, the most exciting thing I was about uh, Wells because this is the most intriguing Wells, and they did him right. Because I don't know, he's, he's such a nice Wells. Oh my god! And I'll give the writers credit for that. And I will never fault the design team for this, but the suit is amazing. Holy! Oh, 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 did you see the nanotech helmet thing? Oh my god! When did they do that? What? Oh, who knows? But I'll give them credit for that. And we're just waiting for you. Season six is incredibly incredibly frustrating but not like season four frustrating everything was in place the storylines the characters and the villains it's just some dumb shit they added and the poor villain that is mirror monarch the backbone of crisis should have made the season top tier and it was until post crisis which is such a shame because if if they, they focus on pre-crisis and then they focus stories based on post-crisis this would have been a top two season. Like, it can't be season one. But I think this season would have beaten season two, really. If the whole se season was consistent as the first half, I would have loved this season so much. I am not excited for season seven, mainly because I haven't watched it yet. Only the first three episodes, which concluded the Mirror Monarch arc. So I'm I'm not that excited. All I know, I am curious what the Speed Force is doing because I have no idea. To be honest, it's like, the four forces, strength, mind, fear, or something like that. I, I really don't know. So I'm pretty intrigued by that. But, like, I hope they defeat the villain in a good way. Please stay tuned and subscribe. Otherwise, don't. If you don't subscribe, you'll be trapped in the mirror dimension.